that program any better. That's that's a shame. It's a shame to hear that, honestly. Um, I mean, one of the reasons why I was so fascinated with your offering was that just like Tim and Justin mentioned is that blockchain really allows for transparency. And there's so many inefficiencies in the government at a federal and state level that it excited me so much, the opportunity, the potential that exists for this particular offering to like really streamline and help them with their own budgeting. Uh, and I, I have to be honest with you, Eli, I I wasn't very familiar with the process of food stamps when I first heard about it. I've, I've never actually participated in one, but I was very curious to learn. And when I was researching to understand better the process, it seems to me like every state, like you mentioned, has its own independent process, even though it's like a federal initiative. So I actually wanted to ask you a little bit about that because... I know that they recently, I mean, um, Pravi and I uploaded some articles in the comment section of the Meetup Invite that specifically talk about the changes that have taken place with the SNAP program. SNAP is the, the food stamps program, as it's known, like, federally. Um, and I was just curious to t on your take to better understand how you're approaching the participating uh, merchants that are going to be on your platform. Because from what I had read online, it seems like uh, the only way that they're allowing this pilot online program to purchase um, these necessities mm -hmm. are only through specifically um, allowed official merchants. They, they call them the the state approved retailers, which are usually limited to like Walmart and, Walmart and such. So how are you overcoming those limitations that are imposed by the program? Yeah, so there's, there's this interesting loop. So it's a $128 billion food stamp program. And that money comes from the federal government to the states, and then from the states to the users. And then from the user, that money goes back into the system through Walmart or Amazon or a handful of other three conglomerates, maybe Safeway, Kroger, and uh, Safeway, Kroger, and Walmart. So all of those companies have this huge amount of lobbying power, and then they lobby back into the, into the federal policies around food stamps. And basically nothing's happened uh, for the last, 10, 20 years around food stamps and all the modern day banking infrastructure ha hasn't been relayed to people that use food stamps. So if you're on food stamps, you, you can't shop online. You can't have any modern day budgeting or banking notifications about balances. You can't use artificial intelligence to maybe help you sh make better purchases uh, get better deals. Anything that's modern in the banking system doesn't work for people that are on food stamps. So it puts them at a huge disadvantage. And, you know, it's disproportionately people of color, low income. And a lot of times people don't realize it's actually all of rural America. You know, 7% of the U.S. veteran population the armed forces, you know, they're on food stamps. So it's not just uh, Latino and black people or homeless people, um, which is a, is another common misconception. And, and those are some of the things that we're continually trying to address and just, and just show that how technology can be used to overcome all of these different barriers. Um, and my belief has always been what you know so probably mentioned that we met back in LA and at the time I, I was working at a couple different artificial intelligence startups uh, one of them got acquired by Google another got acquired by Amazon and I was always concerned that I said why aren't we using technology for problems that are every day and and this was the the you know this startup came out of of working in Silicon Valley, seeing everyday problems in my community uh, where I grew up and, and saying, how come, you know, modern banking and modern technology isn't being used to solve a simple thing like just being able to shop online. Um, and then 
uncovering all the different layers there is around food stamps, around policy, uh, has kind of been uh, in the experience so far. And then even in the investor community, uh, working with uh, venture capitalists, <laughs> sometimes these are just uh, old rich guys that ha have never been on food stamps. And when you tell them, hey, I'm gonna you know, build technology around food stamps, they're like, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what food stamps are. I've never been on food stamps. Yeah, take a hike out of here. I'm not giving you any money. So we, I run into a lot of like VCs that, that haven't, haven't even pondered the idea, and the, but the good VCs, you know, you know, people like Tim Draper and you know, other people, they they see a problem and and they don't maybe they don't they don't understand it, and then they get curious about it and they want to learn about a solution, um, and that's where. Uh, where, where good investors come in. Um, and then then going full circle here, back to blockchain and why I'm a strong believer in Telos uh, and other, uh, other blockchains and, and just in general is because we, we want to see cutting edge technology built for, you know, for problems that are on the forefront of society. And we don't. I don't think we, we need to wait for uh, low-income people to use blockchain technologies. They don't need to be the last in the line. They should be the first in the line on using modern-day technology. Um, and that's why we we're pushing forward on a version two of all EBT built on Telos, uh, built on the blockchain, and actually outside of all of these different uh, regulations and controls that sometimes don't make sense. Uh, now, with that said though, I, I really just wanna highlight one thing that all EBT does adhere to all the, the restrictions of the federal regulations from the United States Department of Agriculture. And we're not, um, we're not in any way trying to circumnavigate what the United States Department of Agriculture has in place right now. That was a long uh, segue. Yeah. But I <laughs> yeah. There's so much, and we and we can see that passion, Eli. Um, and I, honestly, I think it's absolutely true. It is a misconception that even I had that it was it was it, it may be just limited to the kind of people that are participating in food stamps, but this pandemic has really accelerated your vision to become a reality because so many people now qualify by those federal requirements. I mean, people that may have never had to consider that are now in that situation. And this is the premium time to like sell it, right? Sell your idea, sell your vision. And 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 so I'm, that's why I'm asking you these questions so that we can all understand a little bit more how it functions. And hopefully those that see the video afterwards can, can understand how they can participate in and if they can enroll, because I know it's right now it's uh, you have a wait list, correct, for this that's particular correct. product? Yeah, that's correct. So we're focusing on two different markets right now, uh, Los Angeles, Puerto Rico, and those are our two primary functions. We, we had a huge wave of users come from over the last, you know, four to six weeks from the pandemic. And, and regarding the pandemic, I think 